What fascinates me about the House of Music in Vienna is that it is a labyrinth of sound. Sound is so important. A child in the mother's womb hears long before it is born. Sound comes first, long before seeing. Uh, well, as a composer, I'm amazed that my music can be turned uh, into landscapes. René Klemencic. René Klemencic. René Klemencic. When you write every word from the Torah, you, it's like splitting an atom. There's so much energy and so much colors from every word, especially when you write the names of God or you write any of his titles. There is so much meaning in every line and in every dot that it, after you study it, you always think, how didn't I see it before? Kabbalah is the highest wisdom that exists among mankind. There is no question in the whole existence of the universe that doesn't have its answer in, in the world of Kabbalah. Kabbalah is basically the mind of God. Und ich muss sagen, seit ich mich näher mit dem Alten Testament befasse und mit der hebräischen Mystik, I have to say that since I've been studying the Old Testament and the Hebrew mysticism, I've come closer to my own Christianity because those are our common roots. Denn schließlich sind das ja die Wurzeln. This creation of the world is just like an artist decides he's going to make a painting or a mother decides she wants to have a child. And she has the ability to choose exactly what type of a child he wants, she wants to have. It's in, under her total freedom what she wants to create. And out of this freedom, how God choose this type of world that we live in, with all the good and evil in it, Kabbalah has very, very deep insights into this, into the whole phenomena, which is called existence, universe, creation, life, death, and everything which we can, the mind can ever achieve.
When I go to the tomb of the great Rav of Nikolsburg, it's like going back a few centuries ago and I can hear voices that come back from, that echoes from centuries ago. And I can see it living now, as if it's created now, it hasn't lost any of its power. You're enveloped in such a protection of holiness, like in a shell of light and warmth, that, that uh, it's, you know, people usually describe these types of feelings after having drugs, which I never had. But uh, it's, it's the total experience of being in a true, real world, not an imaginative. Actually penetrating into the, like you see the world in a different light. Like you touch reality where all other ways of life are the substitutes for reality and not the essence of life itself. It was first the word of God before there was the energy of light. And so will it be in the future. And the, to, to the voice of sound will also come the final redemption of the world. Music does have one of the tools of Mashiach, of the Messiah. He will definitely use music in order to bring the world to its total harmony. Steht hier Jude. Well, I uh, first uh, intended to write the oratorio, of course, in German, because it's my language, and I didn't know one word of Hebrew. But then getting in uh, deeper and deeper in the world of the Kabbalah, I realized that it is not possible without the knowledge of Hebrew and of Hebrew words and the numeric structure of Hebrew words and letters to compose this work. And so I had in the, be in the beginning all by myself to learn Hebrew. I do believe that your music needs a very great silence. Yes. Before yes. somebody can accept it and mm -hmm. absorb it. Mm -hmm. But when it's sure. well absorbed, yeah. it does have a lot of interesting notes to move you ahead yeah. and to explain many, many feelings that can otherwise not be understood only Thank with you. the power of music. Thank you. And the music does have some echoing and some of those tones yes. that we uh, will hear in the future the when the world yeah. will come to its completeness. completeness. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. With this piece, I'm not interested in the specifically Austrian or the specifically Jewish. What I'm really interested in is the essence that's behind all of these phenomena. I don't see things in a national way, either in one way or the other. We do believe that 
various other philosophies and various other wisdom and sayings that have been said by wise people all over the world have some content in it. And not everything is to be pushed aside. Good evening, excuse my bad English. We'll try to do my best now uh, to give you a little introduction to the work which will, you will hear and which for me marks uh, a, a milestone in my existence. <laughs> Not only musically, but all what is behind this concept of Kabbalah and of the Hebraic mysticism. For me, composition is not as much as for romantic composers an invention. I don't want, I really don't want to invent something incredibly new, which after a week perhaps is already incredibly old. You know, with the new things, you get so quickly tired. So I think the new things are always there and have always been there. And set in every second, life is so incredibly new, so full of new things and of surprises. And you don't have to search for them in a very hysteric way. It's not necessary. And so always it has been like said, of course, when comes the time conception of the Kabbalah, which is very near to the time conception of old China or of uh, modern physics sometimes, that uh, before and afterwards doesn't exist in the Torah. There is no before and no afterwards. And uh, since it's also said, in the, by the Kabbalistic writers that time then becomes time which is always water. In the mysticism it has to do with the number four or even more with the number 40. 40 is the letter Mem. This is water. Water is our world, this continuously changeable, changing world where nothing is stable. But then, at a certain moment, water can become uh, hard, not changing, but hard, yeah, like a crystal. Well, it's hard to describe experiences which are not really completely from our world, no, in, in our world. And then you can walk through time, through water, without being killed. So it's of course, also the meaning of going of, of the Jews through, through the Red Sea, no? where the waters, well, they are there, time is there, but time cannot kill anymore certain persons which have had a certain development. And are coming the Egyptians, which are just a symbolism of, of us all, we are living in Egypt because Egypt is our world. It's not just an historical country. The Egyptians, of course, cannot go through water, through time, without to die. Well, with the truth of God and of our existence, it is like with an immensely huge building, a very great building, with an infinity of rooms, all rooms are closed, but before every room, before the door of every room, lies a key. And all the keys are the right keys, but everything is mixed up. Yes? No door has the right key. In the totality, all the keys are right, but everything is mixed up. 
And that's exactly the situation of Kafka. Well, now I can, I could speak hours and hours just about this thing, but I think I leave you now to the concert. I just wanted to say how deeply I feel it and how important it was also as a technique of composition not to invent new things, but just to find things which are there.